I am going to be posting a new series of tutorials about show control. And what is show control? Show control is software that's primarily used for audio cues, but it can also communicate with other software and hardware in order to simplify and synchronize all aspects of a performance. Traditionally, it's set up as a cue list, but it can be partially or totally automated if you so desire. The level of customization is up to the technician. Now, if you think about the traditional theater setting in the past, you would have a stage manager, and then you would have a person at the lighting console, and a person at the mixing console, and a person that's responsible for firing the audio cues, whether they be on tape or CD or digital, and then at least one person doing projections, possibly two, if there's videos or slide projections. The stage manager would simply call the cues, and then these people would do what they needed to do. Advance onto a lighting cue, change mixer settings, unmute some actors, mute some other actors, play back an audio cue, play back a projection or a slide. With show control, you can actually do this with one person. So the show control would actually control when the lighting cues would be fired. Most modern lighting consoles, and even some of the older ones, if you look in the back, they would have a MIDI connection. Some of the modern ones, no more MIDI connection, but you do have network connections, which allows them to receive OSC information and tell them to advance through cues. Most of the modern sound consoles now also either have MIDI input or, again, a network input, so you can mute and unmute microphones. A lot of the audio consoles now have scenes built into them, so you can save an audio scene, what microphones are on, what microphones are off, at what level, and just select those scenes and play them back just as you would lighting cues. Well, again, show control will be able to take care of that and advance them through these scenes. Now, typically when I'm running a show, I am standing at the mixing consoles because the biggest variable in a performance is probably the audio. So I would stand in front of the mixing console in case there were audio levels or in case there were microphone issues with some of the microphones that the actors were wearing. But I could very easily be standing at the audio console and be tapping a space bar of a computer over here to advance everything else. Audio cues, much easier to handle through the show control as far as where they're going, what sources they're going to, especially if you're going to use the sound card with your computer that has multiple outputs on it. And then finally, projections. Even if the software is not built to accept MIDI or OSC controls, there is a go-between program that can serve that purpose. You can be running a PowerPoint program and using the third-party program, send a MIDI control signal to that PowerPoint to go to a specific slide or play back a specific video. So, the nice thing about it is that it's always going to be timed or synchronized the same way. Every single performance, the synchronization is going to be rock solid and it's going to be the same way. So it takes a lot of advanced work to do it, but it cuts out a lot of variables that you could have during the performance. One of the nice things about show control is that you can have an organized cue list that can be custom colored. So when you're going through the cue list, you know what's happening and what's going to be included in those various cues. Also, this can be put on a thumb drive and easily transferred from one computer to the next. So many times I would plot out my show at home on a laptop, put it on a thumb drive, take that in, put it on the mainframe computer that's running everything at the theater, and uh, you're up and going. Now, as I mentioned, the audio is the biggest part of that, and there's so many features of the audio that would be great. One of the things is it's not necessary to use an external audio software to make repeated edits to audio cues. So you could just make the edits right here. If you want to cut out a part of a WAV file, you can do it within the program. You don't have to go to an external program like Audacity, edit it, and then put it back in the show. Editing can be done right here. You can adjust volume and pan on the fly. And if you can see here, too, in this particular case, we have more than one playback. So with the link on, I'm actually adjusting my playback volumes and positions. 
and that will be recorded. So during rehearsals, I can adjust volume and pan to be optimized the way I want it to. So again, this takes some responsibility away from the audio mixer person. They, they don't have to worry about, oh, this particular track is going to be too loud or this particular track is going to be too soft, so I have to adjust it. You do all that in advance in rehearsals, and then it's going to be the same way performance after performance. There's the ability to layer cues. This is quite a sophisticated example here where they actually have various instruments from the pit orchestra that have been recorded, and we're synchronizing this by using a click track. So in other words, the instrumentalists are listening to a click track to tie the timing of everything in. And it's kind of an extreme example here, but if you had a person missing, like say, keyboard player one is suddenly sick and couldn't be in, you could play back that track and leave the other ones live. So you could pick and choose, okay, what performers are going to be here tonight, which performers are not going to be here. The ones that can't be here, you could play back their track from the previous rehearsal or previous evening. And everybody just synchronizes by click track. The other thing with layering, you can do sound effects. Again, you don't have to go to an external sound editing program. You can start off with rain and then you can add a layer of thunder and you can add a layer of wind to that and then you can adjust and pan and adjust volume levels so it saves a lot of editing and when you get in the theater if you decide the thunder needs to be louder you can adjust on the fly or the rain needs to be softer you can adjust on the fly it just saves a lot of time as far as getting your sound effects and your sound correct in the theater customized looping of audio cues so when i used to do middle school productions they would give us a set of tracks that we would use for the performance but possibly a track wouldn't be long enough to do the scene change that I needed. So this way I could actually loop the track as many times as I needed to cover that scene change. Or again, we can shorten it up if we don't need that much music. So create spatial sound. In this example here, you have sound going to front of house speakers. You have sound going to upstage left and upstage right. That could be a monitor for the actors on stage. You have a rear surround going out around the audience. You have spot effects here going out to different uh, areas. And this could be like a telephone ring coming from a certain place in the theater or a radio sound or a vacuum cleaner sound. The theater I worked in, we had uh, entrances downstage right and downstage left as well as being upstage right and left. It was kind of a theater in the round. So sometimes if we had an actor going in looking at the entrance downstage right trying to imagine that there's a motorcycle or car sound coming from that direction i would simply put a powered speaker down in that entrance way and then i could send a specific audio channel to that powered speaker so i have positional sound now as far as the audience is concerned it sounds like sound is coming from that particular area of the theater you just have to make sure that your audio interface has more than just the stereo output Typically, I had an audio interface that it have at least six outputs on it. Synchronize your audio tracks with lighting cues. In this case here, you can see note off and note on commands. More than likely, these are being sent out to either a mixer or a lighting desk, and it's telling it, go to the next cue. If I had tracks, again, referring back to my middle school, a lot of times I would have an audio track where I would like to change lighting several times during that audio track, but I wanted to be very, very precise. So in this case here, we've done a MIDI sequence and this will fire off and run alongside of the audio track so that I can send specific timing messages to my light board, like at six seconds, 15 milliseconds, go to this setting. So the timing can be very, very precise. And if I thought one of the light cues was a little bit off, it was easy to come back in here and adjust this timing. So again, precise timing between your audio cues and your lighting cues. Hot buttons. So sometimes you're doing performance and it may be more of an improv thing where there's not a specific set of cues that are going to happen at a specific time. So you might want hot buttons. And I know we used to do like a little radio kind of a readback uh, show, almost like a radio show. And I would have what we used to call a sound card with sounds uh, loaded up on here and I could push a button and a certain sound would come out. Didn't have to have a cue list for that. Here's another more sophisticated example here where they it looks like they have a sound card, maybe a game show. Correct answer, wrong answer, plays a certain um, 
sound out of time. But down here, they're also sending signals out to, it looks like, a video mixer to have certain cameras. So you could call up certain cameras if, the, if that video mixer accepts MIDI or OSC commands, you could be calling up settings on that video mixer, something that I have hadn't even thought about, but and there's a great example of that being used in that manner. So as I mentioned, lighting consoles, mixers, most of them nowadays can receive some kind of command, whether it be MIDI or OSC. And this is just showing some of the options with this particular show control program, where we have a MIDI sequence that's running. Or we can send out a simple MIDI command like program change or control change or note on or note off. If you have an older piece of equipment, this particular show control program actually sends out MIDI show control commands, which was something that used to be built into some of the older theater equipment like sound playback and lighting desks. They would accept those commands. Um, serial and network commands where you can actually send commands out or you can actually have commands coming in. So you can actually rig up something where a command can be given from backstage up to the booth or from the booth down to uh, stage. And Telnet port, you can actually communicate with the stage manager who's down on stage, just have, a little, have to have another computer running the software backstage and without having to use a comms, you can actually type messages. It's kind of like text messaging on your phone, but you can have it built into the program. So rather than having to use your phone, you could actually have a little computer back there. So a lot of options. So we are showing OSC here also, which is open sound control. And I'll talk about that in some later tutorials where you can actually send OSC commands to various equipment like lighting consoles, mixers, etc. And in some cases, if you've ever gone to a professional show, they're running time code. With the time code, we're talking about then totally automating a performance where the performance would start at a certain time and it would run and would run automatically through all lighting cues, all sound cues, all mixer cues, all of those kind of things would be controlled by the time code. And these uh, show control programs will generate time code to actually do that for you and coordinate everything for you. Um, basically, press a button and then the entire show runs. You just have to have somebody standing by kind of babysitting in case there's an emergency stop during the program where you need to stop and then restart at a certain time code value. And then finally, cue notes for whoever is going to be your cue operator. Besides color coding over here, you can also include notes. So besides having something written in their script, you could have some notes up here to remind the person running the cues, don't forget to wait for this or look for this uh, happening on stage before you fire a certain cue or after something happens, watch for this before you fire the next cue. So cue notes. So just a lot of options that make the whole performance a lot more professional looking, a lot more synchronized and a lot more controlled. It takes extra work at the top end before the performance, but then running the night of the performance, there's a lot less to worry about because everything should fall right in place for you. So I'll be taking a look at three show control programs and they're all for PC. One program that I used to use all the time was CSC Show Control. This comes in three varieties. There is a free version that's very, very limited. Then there's an LE version that's very, very reasonably priced. That was the version that I used to use because of the features of that version. And then there is a more expensive version that gives you all the bells and whistles. Another program I'll be taking a look at is Multiplay. Now Multiplay was a program that a lot of community theater people used to rely on and then it fell by the wayside because nobody was updating it so as newer versions of Windows came out it started malfunctioning. Well recently a group of programmers have taken up the cause and now they have a new version of this out. They're still working on working out some of the bugs in it but it's generally very very usable. And this program is open source, though so there's no cost at all. I'll be going over the various features that this program can do, but it is very comparable to the other programs and includes MIDI and OSC output. Finally, I'll be going over Stage Research SFX6. This particular program is a great program. It is no longer under development. They have stopped producing the program or updating it, 
So it is limited in that respect. As newer versions of Windows come out, this will probably fall by the wayside, but currently it is very, very usable. For the time being, the author has uh, graciously allowed us to still download it and use it free of charge with very little restrictions on it. So I'll also be introducing you to that program and showing you what that program can do.